Do you know who brought in their own religion to India, which affected all of later Indian religion and thereby all of its history? If you don't, and if you're interested, maybe you have a reason to keep watching. In this video, I will talk about ancient Indian history focusing on its religious development. The story starts in around 1750 BC when people from the Hindu Kush, who were located north of India, east of Iran, came into India. These people are referred as the Aryans, and the Aryans would eventually settle in Harappa up to the Ganges Valley and live amongst the native people of the area. Eventually, kingdoms started to emerge in the Ganges. The Aryans brought in their religion, which was centered around sacrificial concepts. The, Brahm, the Brahmins were priests who presided over the sacrificial ceremonies, and as with all ancient religions, the priests were in a higher social class. The Aryans are believed to have brought in the caste system to India. And there are basically four classes in the following order. The Brahmin, or the priests, warrior aristocrats, ordinary peasant farmers, and the non-Aryans. How do we know all of this? Well, we know a lot about Aryan and ancient India through a religious text called Rig Veda, which is a collection of hymns sung during sacrifice. This text is one of the most important literature that shaped India. I think it's also important to know that this Rig Veda was only written down after 1300 AD, which until then was only orally preserved. However, there is enough grounds to believe it is largely uncorrupted. Now, in the Ganges, Aryan religion merged with the native people's way of life, and Aryan culture eventually dominated, meaning that the Vedic religion was embraced within the region. In addition to the religious climate, a total of 16 kingdoms emerged in the Ganges as well. And for those of you who are interested in the history of the kingdoms, there are two epics called the Ramayana and Mahabharata, which explains the process of how the kingdoms appeared. Interestingly, we have a lot of records about the north, but hardly anything about the south. Scholars believe the north and the south were very isolated, and this claim is supported by the fact that the Dravidian language, which is about 4,500 years old, is still being used down in the south. As I've said earlier, religion is a big part of ancient Indian history, so I'll talk about the development of Indian religion next. I just want to mention that a lot of what I said comes from this book called The Penguin History of the World. I put the link in the description box, so feel free to check it out and buy yourself a copy. Basically, by the first millennium BC, the Aryans and the native people's ways of life integrate to form what we know today as Hinduism up in the north. Hinduism was the successor of the Vedic religion, also known as ancient Hinduism. For example, the famous Hindu god Shiva is believed to be from the native people, while Vishnu is Aryan. As I mentioned before, the Rig Veda is a very important Indian text. The next important text is called Upanishads, which emerged around 700 BC. I think it's safe to say that 
all Indian religion owes to these two texts, the Rig Veda and the Upanishads. So, the Upanishads. The Upanishads is a non-Aryan religious text, and it presents a monotheistic framework of the world, which is in contrast to the previous text I mentioned, the Rig Veda. We don't really know who produced the work, the Upanishads, but historians believe that the text was motivated by those who were unsatisfied or doubted the Rig Veda. This may be why the Upanishads presents a rather monotheistic framework, and one key attribute of the Upanishad was that it presented a very ascetic lifestyle. The Upanishads influenced many, and all subsequent religions derive their ideas, at least to some degree, from this text. As I've said, there were a growing number of people who were opposed to the ideas of the Vedic religion, right? And one result is the emergence of a religion called Jainism. For those of you who haven't heard of this religion, basically, Jainism's basic beliefs and tenet is to not hurt any living thing. This meant these people turned away from husbandry and into trading for their living. Because of this, many became merchants, which may also explain why many modern Jains are relatively rich today. Another key religion that arises from this turn away from traditional religion is Buddhism. Buddhism was founded around 6th century BC by a man named Siddhartha Gautama. He was not amongst the Brahman priestly class, but was a prince of the warrior class near the Ganges Valley. He basically got bored of his life as an aristocrat and decided to pursue asceticism for seven years. But he later realized he's on a wrong path. He eventually reaches the conclusion that the goal of life is to escape suffering by reaching higher states of consciousness. Yoga, as it turns out, was a key part of achieving higher states of consciousness. Interestingly, both the teaching about suffering, higher states of consciousness, and even yoga are seen in the Upanishads, which goes on to show how formative the text was. At this time, at this point in time, Buddhism was practiced by the minority and Hinduism by the majority. And in later times, we would see some merging of the two religions, and also the introduction of Islam, a new religion.